Tonight, a local school district says it's eliminating class rankings for students who fall below the top 10 percent. A new task force in San Antonio aims to make sure financial crimes against the elderly are fully prosecuted. And federal health officials now saying this year's flu shot isn't a good match for the dominant strain of flu that's going around. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9. I'm Myra Arthur. An arrest has been made tonight in Houston after a student at Bel Air High School was shot and killed this afternoon. That shooting happened in the school's courtyard around 4 o'clock today. Houston ISD later confirming the student died. The suspect was caught tonight. We don't yet know that person's name or whether they are a student at that school. The relationship between the victim and the suspect is also still unclear tonight. We'll update this info as soon as details are released. It is the first school district in San Antonio to make a big move. Northeast ISD is dropping class rankings for all students not within the top 10 percent. So why and which students would exactly be affected? Tiffany Huertas explains how the district made this decision. This would provide opportunities for our kids to explore other avenues of interest for them. On Monday, NEISD trustees voted to stop calculating class rankings for students below the top 10 percent. Donna Newman with NEISD says this will help alleviate stress that students feel about the rank. In years past, with the legislature wanting everybody college bound, we ranked all of our students, 100 percent of our students. Newman says they have been looking into this change since 2018. She says district officials met with school administrators and counselors, plus advertised meetings throughout the district, inviting parents to look at the plan and give their input. There were questions and very, very good questions, but I think um, once their questions had been answered, there was overwhelming support for this change. Newman says they also spoke with universities. They found during the admission process, some universities are looking at the child's entire academic experience, not just their rank. The top 10 percent of our state universities, they look for the, the top 10. If it's not there, what they do, and, and like I said, we have reached out to universities, they will look at other things. If the rank is not there and if we don't report rank, they, they look at, at community service. They look at the coursework, the variety of coursework that students have taken. Um, they look for extracurricular activities. Newman says this will not impact anyone in high school right now. This is strictly for our seventh grade students who are just now choosing their eighth grade courses and beginning their, their career pathway through high school. Now the top 10% are automatically admitted at most state funded universities in Texas, but some are allowed to set their own admission rules thanks to a Senate bill passed in 2009. This year at UT Austin, those in the top 6% of their class can automatically be admitted. The university says the change is due to continued growth in the number of applications. Myra. All right, this will be an interesting change. Thanks, Tiffany. Prosecuting crimes against the elderly, the newly formed Elder Abuse and Exploitation Task Force looks to ensure that financial crimes against seniors are fully prosecuted. Judge Veronica Vasquez says she discovered that criminal cases confirmed by Adult Protective Services were not being followed through to the Bear County District Attorney's Office for prosecution. She says there were holes in the system at every agency level that allowed these cases to fall through. This new task force involves a representative from all agencies with a stake in the game to communicate and improve the current system. We need to be protective of those people who've done so much for all of us. I mean, most of us wouldn't be here without someone in our life that was there as a role model, as a caretaker, as a parent, a grandparent, a teacher, uh, someone who took care of someone before them. And we've got to step up and, and protect them from people who want to take advantage of them. According to the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services, Bear County has the highest percentage of people over 65 in the entire state. The city of San Antonio has some work left to do to clear Elmendorf Lake of an invasive species of plant. It's called water hyacinth. People nearby say the rotting vegetation smells as bad as this looks. The biggest part of the problem is beneath the Commerce Street Bridge in the back channel of the lake. It's become a dumping ground for trash and possible storm debris. Now, city crews did clear part of the lake of the plant, but then they stopped for the holidays. The city says that work will continue tomorrow and they'll try to figure out what's causing the growth. 
burglars cut through the roof of a local sandwich shop. A basketball team escapes their school bus just before it bursts into flames. Plus, elementary school students in Los Angeles reportedly hit with jet fuel from a passing plane. Here's tonight's 9 at 9. San Antonio police investigating a murder-suicide involving two relatives. The shooting happened this morning at the trucking company where the men worked. Police say the suspect showed up to work late, walked into the office, and shot his family member. The suspected shooter then took off in a truck, parked at a family dollar, and shot and killed himself. Police say burglars cut through the roof of a firehouse sub sandwich shop on the city's south side. Two delivery drivers told police they noticed the alarm was going off when they got there early this morning. This crime has left those drivers confused. They're wondering why someone would target a shop that sells sandwiches when there's a cell phone store right next door. Police say it was the employee's arrival that scared the suspects off. They ran out the back door before breaking into the safe. A boys basketball team in Minnesota narrowly escaped the back of their school bus before it burst into flames. The team's coach says that they were on their way to the game when they saw smoke coming from the front of the bus. He says the driver quickly pulled over and ordered everyone out the back. Been the bus driver, great job understanding the situation, pulling over and then being able to get back and help with the kids, get all that stuff and get us all, all of us getting safely away. The cause is under investigation. In San Antonio, a school bus loaded with 40 kids was hit by a driver after police say that person's vehicle skidded on the south side. It happened on Highway 281 near Martinez La Soya Road this morning. A spokesperson for Southside ISD says two kids were taken to a hospital just to be checked out, but they were not seriously hurt. 17 children and six adults were reportedly hit with jet fuel as it fell from the sky in Los Angeles. The kids were on the playground when this happened. Everyone was treated for minor injuries. The FAA confirms a Delta plane headed for China experienced an emergency soon after takeoff and returned to the airport. The FAA has not confirmed that the substance was jet fuel. A new Sikh center near Sacramento was vandalized with racist graffiti, a swastika and white power was spray painted on the newly opened temple yesterday. The graffiti was immediately removed and no one has been arrested. The temple is now applying for grants to upgrade their security. A woman is suing American Airlines, claiming an employee sent her suggestive texts. She says she was waiting for a flight to take off when a man who called himself Ahmad started texting her about her appearance and offered to get her a better seat. She alerted a flight attendant who said they were familiar with Ahmad and when the flight landed, he was escorted off first. It's unclear how he got her number. The woman is suing the airline for negligent hiring, sexual harassment, stalking, and emotional distress. The sky over a town in Arizona turned purple last Friday. The light came from a medical marijuana farm. The farm says the glow came from red and blue lights that are used to help grow pot plants. And there was a fog in the area at the time, which reflected those lights and spread it all across the sky. Toyota has announced a safety recall involving nearly 700,000 vehicles from 2018 and 2019. The fuel pumps on the subject vehicles could stop working, resulting in stalls. Toyota is working on a fix and will notify owners of affected vehicles by mail by mid-March. To see if your car is involved in this recall, visit toyota.com slash recall. To read more about these nine stories, go to ksat.com slash news at nine. The weather from yesterday slowly improving today. We did yeah. see some sun out there, Katie. Yeah, so hopefully nice. we're on the upward trend. Uh, yes, uh, it's going to stay warm the next few days, but we like we need some measurable rain. If it's going to be foggy and overcast, like not can, the drizzly, yeah. obnoxious, just dirty up your car stuff. Right, right. Can we get some good rain? It looks <laughs> like we have a shot at that Thursday into Friday. If you were with us last night, uh, this view was was very messy because we already had a dense fog advisory in place at this time last night. But as you can see, looking outside, this is near the airport here in San Antonio. Things are looking pretty good. Skies are starting to fill back in with clouds and there is some patchy fog out there. Here's a look at visibility in and around Bear County down to four miles at Bernie stage eight miles at the airport here in San Antonio, but in and around town 
things are pretty good. Off to the south and to the east, though, visibility is starting to fall pretty quickly down to a mile in Victoria, three miles up in College Station, and for the rest of the evening and overnight, we'll see fog gradually fill in uh, to the east, closer to us here in San Antonio. Dense fog advisories are already out for parts of southeast Texas. I wouldn't be surprised if by early tomorrow morning we see another dense fog advisory in place for us here in San Antonio. Uh, so keep in mind tomorrow morning, just like the past couple of mornings, you may need a few extra minutes for the morning commute uh, with dense fog expected to develop through very early on Wednesday morning. But I expect tomorrow to really look a lot like today. So that does mean a foggy gray start to the day, but I do expect we'll see a little bit of clearing in the afternoon uh, that could start as early as lunchtime. So with some sun, we'll warm up once again. High temperatures, upper 70s, low 80s tomorrow afternoon. And in case you were wondering, yes, that is very warm for this time of year. Our average highs uh, through this point in January are in the low 60s. Uh, we'll be trending well above that tomorrow uh, as we are expected to climb back to near 80 degrees in the afternoon. So definitely very warm. Things start to get a bit more interesting once we get into the day Thursday and Friday. That's when we're offered a slightly better chance of rain. So I am going to take you to Thursday morning. Some more patchy fog could be possible to start the day on Thursday, but I think we're going to see way more shower activity outside as you head out on Thursday morning. So passing showers in the forecast really through a portion of the day. Thursday there's going to be a stalled front sitting up in the hill country that'll help to keep some shower activity around through a good portion of the day Thursday. But rain chances will continue into Friday. Uh, we're going to have what looks like some more widespread, potentially heavier rain well to the west of San Antonio and I-35 through the day Friday, but that will gradually inch closer to the I-35 corridor as an approaching cool front from the northwest moves on through. So we're going to have a 60% chance of rain Thursday into Friday. A few rumbles of thunder will be possible here and there. No big concern for severe weather, but this rain could add up to uh, around an inch of rain for our far western counties here in San Antonio, maybe closer to a quarter half inch of rain through Thursday and Friday. Things will clear out beautifully for the weekend. Martin Luther King Jr. Day on Monday, though, will turn things back around cloudy, cool with chances of isolated rain returning to the forecast. So most of the upcoming kind of long weekend will be OK, but it does look like things are going to turn pretty chilly as we get closer to Monday. And of course, we'll keep you updated on that forecast in the coming days. All right. Thanks, Katie. You're welcome. Sometimes it is hard to build good habits, but we all know they can benefit you if you stick to them in the long run. If your New Year's resolution was to manage your finances better, you need to dedicate some time to creating better money habits. Digital journalist Ivan Herrera has some tips in this week's Money It's Personal. I know, I know. Every week I give you some tips on how you can improve your finances, but those tips won't be effective if you don't make a habit out of them. So the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau has some tips to help you manage your money by creating better habits. First, only apply for credit when you need it. A good credit score is important for your financial well-being. So one way to get and keep a good score is to only apply for the credit you need. Next, you're entitled to a free credit report every 12 months. So, it's ideal to set up an annual reminder to be up to date and spot any potential errors that may be hurting your credit score. The CFPB also suggests setting up bank alerts to notify you of your checking account balance at the end of the week or if your balance gets too low. This can protect you from incurring any overdraft fees. If you have a financial emergency and you can't make the bills this month, act fast and call your creditors. Missing a bill payment may have negative financial impacts, so it's best to call your lenders or creditors before your due date to see what your options are. Lastly, when you're shopping for a loan, get quotes from at least three lenders. The CFPB says one of the best ways to save money on a loan is to shop around and get estimates to compare terms and fees. For The Nine, Ivan Herrera. We have a list of those tips from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau on our website right now. Just head to ksat.com slash news at nine to find them. And if you have any money questions that you would like us to answer, you can submit those right there at the bottom of that article. You're watching KSAT News at nine. We'll be back in just one minute.
President Donald Trump's power to declare war may soon be restricted as lawmakers battle over whether they believe what the Trump administration is saying, that Iran's top military commander was planning imminent attacks on Americans. Lawmakers on both sides of the political aisle are still debating the administration's motive for killing Qasem Soleimani. President Trump tweeting in part, quote, it doesn't really matter because of his horrible past, end quote. Soleimani was not some government official, he was a terrorist. And President Trump was right to take him down. Both the Attorney General and the President have suggested that imminence isn't required. Uh, I urge both of them to read the United States Constitution because the way it works is only Congress has the power to declare war. Now Congress is looking to limit President Trump's power to declare war without congressional approval. A resolution that already passed in the House will now be taken up in the Senate. Let's take a look at some of today's top stories. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention saying today a vast majority of patients, about 80 percent, who suffered lung injury linked to vaping got their THC products outside of the commercial market. The CDC says they usually got those products from friends or online dealers instead of commercial sources. And teenagers under 18 are the most likely to get those products. More than 2,600 people nationwide have been hospitalized with lung injury linked to vaping. 57 people have died. The CDC says it's still not sure about the cause, even though officials have been focusing on products that do contain THC. More delays for Boeing, which is trying to get its 737 MAX back in the air. American Airlines announced today it will not put the aircraft back in service before early June. That means a cancellation of 140 flights every day until then. The company said those planes will be gradually worked back into the schedule over the course of a month once it's certified. American's fleet of 737 MAX planes has been grounded since March after a second deadly crash involving that aircraft. United Airlines will also keep the 737 MAX on the ground until June. Only more bad news when it comes to the flu this year. Apparently the main strain of flu circulating around doesn't exactly match what's in this year's flu shot. According to the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, children are particularly susceptible to influenza B Victoria and that this year's flu vaccine isn't a very good match for that. According to the CDC data released last week, if your child is exposed to B Victoria, there is a 58% chance their flu shot will be well matched to protect against it. Doctors say the vaccine is, however, really good, a really good match for the strain called H1N1. The CDC reports 32 children have died from the flu this season. This story had a lot of people buzzing today. You can soon build your own Baby Yoda. Build-A-Bear announced today it will, in stores, soon stock the Mandalorian's favorite sidekick. The Star Wars character took the world by storm in November when it was revealed on the Disney Plus series The Mandalorian. The creators were so intent on keeping Baby Yoda, whose official name is The Child, a secret. They didn't tell toy companies about it. Disney recently tried to appease fans by announcing toys and allowing fans to pre-order them, but those won't ship until April or May. Let's go to KSAT.com right now to find out what is trending tonight with RJ Marcus. All right, Myra, pretty interesting day on our website today. And we start first with a five-year-old mariachi singer mm -hmm that uh, is getting all sorts of popular nowadays. Um, <laughs> this little guy here, Mateo Lopez, uh, you may remember him. He was the one who serenaded his mom at Mi Tierra. You remember uh, this video? Yes, 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 yeah. I do, okay. In case you need a refresher, we have that on our website right now. Uh, while well, Mateo is going big time here, he's gonna be on a network show called uh, Little Big Shots. 
So he's going to be doing oh, okay. his thing there. Yeah, this is a show hosted by Melissa McCarthy. And um, yeah, Look Mateo. Look how cute. Yeah, Mateo is just uh, is a little heartbreaker here, man. He's just oh, <laughs> getting ready to do adorable. some big things here. Um, so he uh, made it to the finals of Mexico's Got Talent. So he's definitely not afraid of the stage here. Yeah, yeah. not afraid of the spotlight. Yeah, definitely not. And uh, again, we had that video that went viral last year of him performing at Mi Tierra. He was singing along with the other mariachi groups there. Oh man, I wish I had this kid's talent. skills. Such a little guy. <laughs> yeah, tiny. I know. This kid's got way more skills than I may ever have. <laughs> That's awesome. But, well, um, I wish him the yeah. best of luck yeah. on yeah. this show. Yeah, we're all cheering for him. All right, so uh, yeah, good stuff there from him. All right, moving on here. Kanye West, Myra, did you know okay. that he It's is always in San like, what am I going to hear after I hear <laughs> Kanye West? Okay. Uh, no, this is actually, uh, this is a good Kanye story, I think. Okay. Um, so Kanye is in San Antonio in the form of a bronze sculpture. Oh, yes. I didn't, I, yeah. I, no, news to me. Yes. Okay. Um, so this is kind of interesting because uh, we did a throwback Thursday on the McNay Art right. Museum. Right, yeah, last week. last week. And so as the director was showing uh, myself and Andrew around, we came upon this sculpture of Kanye West and we were like, this is the most random thing possibly at this museum. <laughs> Did you know it was Kanye? No. Before you saw like no the little idea. placard that no, said it was Kanye? No okay. idea. And actually like the director had to be like, yeah, that really is Kanye West that you're looking at there. And your next question was why? Uh, yeah, how did this thing get here? Uh, so apparently two prominent local collectors, uh, Guillermo Nicholas and uh, Jim Foster, they, uh, they have loaned it to the McNay. It's part of their collection. So oh, they paid a lot okay. of money for it. I looked up this wow. thing and it like uh, sold for millions of dollars. If you want to visit Kanye West, you can visit him at the McNay. Who knew? <laughs> I had no idea. Okay. Pretty random story, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, check out the full article on our website, ksat.com. See, you never know what you're going to find when you go out exactly. exploring on Throwback exactly. Thursday. Okay. Yeah, Throwback Thursday, the best ever. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, moving on here. Uh, PAX, PAX South. This thing is getting huge. I don't yes. know if you are uh, familiar with it. Okay, I know a little bit about it. Okay. But I also know our director of mm -hmm. the show, Patrick, yes. who's over there punching yeah. buttons as we speak. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. big into PAX. <laughs> so he told me a little bit about it in the break room the other day. So oh, explain good. what it's all about. Yeah, so uh, it is the Penny Arcade Expo. And uh, so it's basically just a kind of a big gamer conference. They do okay. the uh, cosplay. Um, and yeah, we should have Patrick up here explain this whole thing. Because right? he's going to be. Well, we only have. So so much this, time, that's true. right? You know, and Patrick. <laughs> He could talk a lot and about PAX. And he was PAX. laughing. Yeah, he can definitely talk <laughs> a lot about PAX. Um, this is the sixth annual event. I remember going to this a few years back, and I was shocked at just the amount of people that were there. And this was, I think, it's like second and year. And I'm sure it's grown yeah. a yeah, ton, Yeah, it right? definitely has, yeah. So um, good times here. We're probably not going to hear from Patrick all weekend because he's going to be at Patrick, this Patrick, are you going? <laughs> yes. He's yes. going. He said yes. We can confirm. I think That's he's going all three days, doing. right? All yeah. three days? All yeah, three days. he's super excited. Three-day pass for Patrick. Yeah. There you go. We'll have him report. When hey, he comes yeah, back. he yeah. can do a debrief <laughs> on PAX. Lexi, our go. producer, I'm sure she'd love that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, she, yeah. she's giving me one of these. She's like, eh, okay. Um, but if you guys want more information on this, head to our website, ksat.com. All right, thanks, right. RJ. Thank you, Mara. We'll be right back. <laughs> This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. MGM Resorts will sell the MGM Grand and Mandalay Bay casinos in Las Vegas. MGM Grand Las Vegas will be acquired by a joint venture of MGM Growth Properties and Blackstone Real Estate Income Trust for about $2.5 billion. And the grocery chain Albertsons is looking to tap into the public markets once again after pulling its IPO back in 2015. The country's number two supermarket operator is owned by the private equity firm Cerberus Capital Management. According to the Wall Street Journal, Albertsons is anticipating a valuation of around $19 billion. 
And a Snoop Dogg inspired breakfast sandwich is now available at Dunkin'. It is called the Beyond D-O-Double-G Sandwich. It features a plant-based Beyond sausage patty with egg and cheese. It's served in between a sliced glazed donut and shares a Beyond Meat popping on the news. Dunkin' debuted its Beyond sausage sandwich a few weeks ago. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Kristen Chilla from the Florida New York Stock Exchange. That is all our time on KSAT News at 9 tonight. We stream Monday through Friday from right here in the KSAT 12 newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you tomorrow.